Hello and welcome to the 43rd Minute Review Show. Today we are going to be talking about the very complicated Cloud Atlas. Uh, it was directed by three separate directors, each taking a section of the story. Uh, uh, you've got Tom Twiker, I don't know if that's how you pronounce his name, Andy Wachowski and Lana Wachowski. Uh, and it stars Tom Hanks, Halle Berry, Jim Broadbent, Hugo Weaving, Jim Sergis, Donna Duna Bay, Ben Wishaw, Keith David, James DeCasey, Zon Zhao, David Gaithin, and Susan Sarandon, and Hugh Grant. I had to put them all in there because it's a huge cast. It is an absolutely huge cast. I'm sorry I had to read them off the list because it's a really hard thing to remember. But uh, yes, yeah, so Cloud Atlas is massive. It's about three hours long. It definitely feels like three hours long uh, and it has five or six stories in it and when I say that they're not individual stories they're not like given to you one at a time they are given to you all at the same time with you not really staying with any particular story longer than five minutes now that's its biggest strength and its biggest weakness because the stories in here are brilliant but they kind of go from a man trying to escape an assisted living facility to <laughs> to a like a crazy futuristic Japan where a, a slave race has been bred and huge sci-fi gun battle fights in a split second. I mean, you you go from that to that, and you're kind of like, whoa, what's happening? But nevertheless, each story is fascinating, and you want to see more of it. And so it's a huge credit to them to manage to do that. It is immensely frustrating at points when you're like almost in tears and then you're like laughing your head off and then you're like, whoa, that was exciting. And you just, but sometimes that feels, sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, it is a hugely amazing and frustrating film at the same time, which is an odd, odd thing. Uh, it's an incredible technical achievement and experiment in terms of like what you can do with film, uh, talking about philosophy and life and religion and things like that throughout all these films, but it is odd. That's genuinely what I can say about it, is that it is odd. Like you'll go, if you go and see it, which I thoroughly recommend, so does Gemma, go and see it. You'll either absolutely love it or you'll hate it. I don't really think there is a middle ground here because you either really get into it and just kind of go with the flow of the stories, which doesn't always work. You either go with the flow of the stories or you don't. Like, and there was a couple of people walking out of the screening that we were in, but it was nevertheless absolutely rammed to the rafters in the middle of the day. So like, people wanted to see it and it definitely has lasting appeal because I loved it and the first thing I thought when I left the cinema was where do I start? I think I'm going to need to watch it again not because it's confusing, no 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 I thoroughly get all the storylines and everything like that and all the nuances and tricks and traits and things like that and how they were all woven together there is just so much of it that you think I'm going to need to watch it again which is which is something special, I think, which is something special. But nevertheless, I find it frustrating and annoying, but amazing at the same time. So, it, 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 there's too much of that. It could also, like, I'd quite like to see all of the films either cut back into segments where you can watch them individually, or as their own individual films, each separate from each other, all put together as the Cloud Atlas thing like that, like they are read in the stories, all the stories are individual in the book, uh, but are all interwoven in the film. Uh, what else to say really? Because I think it's something that you need to see in order to understand, but um, like what it's like, because I can literally say that there's nothing that I've seen that's exactly like this. The fountain um, uh, is quite like this. Uh, but not even to the same extent that it's much more focused, which a lot of people will go like, what? The fountain's more focused? Uh, like, and you're right, it is a bit like the fountain is a, like a film that goes all over the place. I love that too, so that might be why it leads into why I kind of love this film. Uh, it is a mess 
but it's brilliant mess. Like, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Uh, anyway, you should definitely check it out. If you don't like it, I'm very sorry. But I think in terms of film buffs or anybody who loves a bit of films, a bit of film, you should definitely check it out. If you're just a casual film viewer, don't watch that. But for its problems, they do kind of outweigh the benefits of it, kind of. So it's only going to clock up three out of five from us. But possibly even three gold stars. Because everything that's amazing about this is truly incredible. Everything that's bad about it is incredibly frustrating and annoying. But anyway, please just check it out. Give it a watch, give it an experiment, try it out, don't like it, no big loss. If you love it, it's a big win. So, I'll see you next time, okay? Bye bye!